Welcome back to Beyond the Gate, our Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood podcast. I'm Megan. And I'm Meg. And today we are talking about episode 61, He Who Would Swallow God. Yes, in this episode, millions of lifeless bodies litter the landscape of a mistress, and a being with the power to create suns is unleashed upon the world. Unless Hohenheim has something amazing up his sleeve, all is surely lost. Yes, and this covers the manga chapters 104, Center of the World, 105, The Throne of God, and 106, Pride's Abyss. I finally, I was way behind on reading the, the manga, and I finally caught up. Woo! Yeah, that yes. takes a while, honestly. <laughs> I mean, you don't, you don't think it because it's, it's a manga, it's a comic, you can, you can yeah. blaze through them pretty fast, but if you get a couple volumes behind, it's really hard to catch back up. Yeah, I read like, two volumes honestly it only took me like 45 minutes to get through okay. two it's pretty good i guess things are going honestly, pretty fast now yeah and like like reading fight scenes is is harder for me to picture it in my head like when like yeah. when, like when i'm seeing it like on the page like i'm like I don't really know what's happening so i just kind of brush past that stuff it's easier when they're like when i'm reading a book and like describing mm. what's happening it's easier for me to picture it yeah well i feel like we're gonna have a lot to talk about in this episode so let's get into it the first scene of this episode is we see young Ed and Al, and they're studying alchemy and they're saying the the sun is male and the moon is female and their union is the the perfect being and Al asks Ed, oh, is that it, the an immortal, immortal being? And Ed's like, no, I don't think so. It, it, and he's like, I think it might be God. And then, as we know, Father has just consumed God. In quotes. Um, <laughs> and we go back to the present and everything is quiet um in all of a mistress because everybody souls have been taken from them except for the people that are in the center of the circle um the sacrifices or yeah the sacrifices are waking up and they're all still alive and we see father he looks like young hohenheim again um, i feel like he looks a little bit different but that's mm. basically you know what he looks like um but I'm sad that he didn't get his 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 young voice back. Sorry, Aaron, you're gonna have to wait. <laughs> yes. Um and he says he became one with God and he is using the souls of the fifty million um Amestrians to contain God in his in the in his vessel. Um and he has become very powerful. He's able to create a sun. Yeah. The power of the sun in the palm of his hand. He did what Doc Ock couldn't. <laughs> you Spider-Man nerd. Mm, always. <laughs> um, And then we see him, like, sense something. He, like, you, like, hear... It sounds like a heartbeat. Like, it's like a classic... Um, yeah. Like Classic somebody's in pain, anything. kind of. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and I, this make, made way more sense in the manga. There, um, Hohenheim, he, he tells father that thing that he's hearing, it's the, the millions of beating heartbeats. Um, uh, we learned that in the manga, at least, they explain it better, I think. Um, the souls of the country's citizens, they're still connected to their bodies by a string, which is known as the spirit. And Hohenheim says, like an infant who is tied to his mother through the umbilical cord, they haven't quite let go. And right. so... So they haven't completely become fathers yet for him to control. Mm -hmm. And also, the souls will be drawn back to their bodies like a magnet. Um, that's That's a quote from the manga too and that kind of gave me some relief because 
like I don't know. The thought went through my head of if these souls are released, I wonder if people will get body swapped. <laughs> Mm. But there's no fear of that because your individual soul will be drawn to your individual body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And we learn that this, that they can go back to their bodies because Hohenheim, it's philosopher's stone. It has been scattered out over a mistress and um, it is activated by the you know, needs a needs a circle to like activate the 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 transmutation circle, and the circle is the moon's shadow, and it's which called the in, umbra, right? Yes, yep. They don't say that, that from the manga. manga. They, yeah, they say I, that in the manga. I wish they um, said that in the anime because that's a good right? term. That's yeah, that's kind of pretty actually. Yeah, I know. I don't know anything about astronomy, so I don't know. If that's legit or not. I, I think wait. it is. I've heard that term before. I, th- I, I have too. I'm actually just going to Google it. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, okay. Umbra is the fully shaded inner region of a shadow cast by an opaque object, especially the area on Earth or Moon experiencing the total phase of an eclipse. Cool. Interesting. <laughs> nice. Science. Science. <laughs> <laughs> um... And the souls, they, the philosopher's stone, they activate and attack father and return everyone's souls. And father is, he's losing control. It's, it's harder, it's harder for him to contain, contain God. And this is when the, he starts attacking everyone, um, all the Ed and Al and Hohenheim and May and, um, and now they can't use their alchemy, but so Hohenheim and May are protecting everyone. Um, yeah. and and now also like help out their father. They like hold hold his hold his back to keep him up. Yeah, I like May's. Um, I don't know May and Hohenheim working together just makes sense because she can protect them from the ground attacks. Because she says the more energy that flows through the ground, the more power she has at her disposal. So, like, anything Father throws at them, she can use against him or to protect them. Mm, yeah. And and while they're doing that, we hear Ed say, like, come on, Scar, what are you doing? Um, and we see Scar, Scar and the Fuhrer still going at it, and the Fuhrer seems to be winning. Um and he's trying to, I don't know, he's telling Scar, like, oh, you're going against your god by using um, using alchemy. And he's like, do you even believe that there is a god? And at the critical moment when the fears are, like, about to kill Scar, he gets blinded and Scar, like, destroys his arms. Yes, um, it was but- the moon reflecting off of his mm-hmm. sword that blinded him, right? I think so. Yeah. I didn't, couldn't quite understand what was happening, but I think that's what it was. Um, and the Fuhrer, though, he's not done. He takes a sword in his mouth and stabs Scar. Um, Luckily, it's not a fatal spot, but boy, I bet that hurt. Yeah, yeah. And the, the battle is the the battle is over, and Lanfon arrives, um, and she's gonna she's gonna kill the Fuhrer to. Get, take her revenge for killing her her grandfather she, before she does that though she asks the if he loved anyone and he's like yeah, that's a stupid question but kind of implies that he did he loved he loved his wife because he he chose her yeah and in the manga his quote was you know nothing she's the woman i chose we didn't need such meaningless words to understand each other such as the way between a king and his companion and that line just hit me because, well, the next panel is Lanfon's reaction to it. And they really focus on her because there's significance in that statement as Lanfon is the companion of Ling, who is her king. So she she can understand that better than most. Mm-hmm. And then Lanfon doesn't get her chance to kill the Fuhrer because he turns old and, and dies. Um, but before that, he's like, I enjoyed life. I enjoyed the human human idiosyncrasies. It made life worth living. And then he dies. How come I feel kind of 
bad for such a horrible person? I don't. Mm, or not bad, I mean, but I, I feel, feel like I feel bad in some way because like this life was kind of forced upon him. Yeah, true. Um, and but, I, I guess in my mind, I just kept remembering the soft moments he had with his wife, and even with Salim when Salim was posing as his son, where it looked mm-hmm. like they were kind of a family who actually enjoyed time together. And yeah. those were the parts of life that he was he was thinking of in his final moments. Mm-hmm. And Lan Fan helps Scar to the center of the room, and Scar activates the the reverse transmutation circle, um, which is they don't really make this super clear, but that's what the Ishvalans were like helping. They're like placing spots around the city to get that set up. And then we go back to Father's Lair, and Ed, I, he, yep, he's ready to fight. He throws off his coat and he's ready to go yeah i love his manga quotes in your face you cocky freak your precious throne is in pieces now up until now you've been calling the shots not anymore you and that truth of yours are gonna eat my fist (laughs) yes (laughs) yeah he's ready and then we get a little bit of explanation about what just happened well we already know this but alchemy uses tectonic plates to perform alchemy but um that was held back that was being held back by father and like the philosopher's stone they couldn't use the full power of the plates um but now they can because um scar's brother realized that a mistress was a giant transmutation circle and he developed a, a reverse circle which they explain in the manga is he used the Amestrian National Transmutation Circle as its base, and um, okay, and then superscribe and he superscribed the lines with the purification arts and neutralized the philosopher's stone. Yeah, and um, in the manga, to, they also they also mentioned that Amestris was um intentionally keeping information about alchemy from alchemists. Yeah, yeah, we see so they like couldn't a little, find out. Yeah, and yeah, the purification arts is alchemy. Yeah. And um, in the manga, Ed is amazed by the amount of alchemy he is now able to do. Like, he says something mm-hmm. like, I barely transmuted and I did all this. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Um, you see, I feel like you see a lot more going on in the in the manga. Yeah, um, yeah. And Scar was, he was the one who activated the reverse circle. And he kind of has a moment where he's like, "My, I'm helping my enemies, like, reach their full potential um yeah but he also has a self-reflection moment where it's like the negative things i've done the positive things i've done the good and the bad is it all going to balance out Mm Hmm. yep um and then we see ed he's like firing cannons at father and and greed is attacking and izumi is attacking and um they don't they dump the molten lava that greed was killed in uh the original greed was killed in um on father and they're they're basically like trying to get him to use up his philosopher's stone um so that he'll he'll let go of of god and then he decides to to move above ground and he to get to make more philosopher's stones and we see him like kill soldiers to do that yeah Um, in the manga though i don't think well we'll see if in the next episode the soldiers get up but in the manga, he's about to kill them until something interferes, and they're fine. There's okay. a lot left. There's a lot less death that happens in the manga in these last couple chapters, with mm. just the battle that happens. Interesting. Um, and everybody else goes up too, except for Ed. He stays behind to fight Pride, and um. We get a quick scene of Izumi and Sig reunited, and it was amazing. Um, <laughs> and also Hawkeye and Mustang are you reunited, and it's so cute because they're both so concerned for each other. I mean, they both got seriously injured, um, but Mustang is, asks Hawkeye if she can still fight. Um, yes, sir. So they're <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna join the battle. Um, and then also Greed and Greenling and Lanfan reconnect. And Greed sees that Wrath is gone. And I don't 
know that he says this in the anime, but in the manga, he's like, God, oh, look at that smug face. Yeah, I think in the anime, he's like, huh, he died smiling. Of course he did. Kind of yeah. like, I don't know. There's like a little bit of a tinge of sadness to his voice, but also kind of like that, how dare you get a happy ending ish. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of emotions going through him right now. Mm hmm. Uh, and then the final scenes of the episode, Megan's favorite, um, and the fight between Ed and Pride. Ed, he calls Pride father's lapdog, and he's like, father doesn't care about you. Why are you fighting for him? And Pride is pretty beaten up. He's missing his eyes, and it's really cool because it, like, fills with his shadows. Um, it looks pretty awesome. <laughs> mm-hmm. And he is pretty weakened and weakened, and... He's like, oh, me and Ed are basically brothers, so I'm going to try to take Ed's body for for myself. Yeah, this goes by really fast in the anime, but in the manga, it looks a lot more painful. Like, Pride grabs Ed like he does in the anime and shoves his shadows into a cut on Ed's face. But in the manga, the, the cut is on um, one side of his face. And you see his eye get all whited out when the the shadow goes in, and it's like as he's slipping into to Ed's skin, Ed's just screaming, and his body's all contorted, and and like you see veins popping mm-hmm. on his face. Yeah, yeah, it looked really painful. Um, but then Kimberly, who was eaten by Pride a while ago, um, stops him. He somehow, um maintained his uh autonomy and he's like you're so pathetic um you're you're giving up your homunculus body to become human and it, well i said this but then i read the manga and basically Kim- kimberly says the same thing is like you're you're giving up your your pride you're you're becoming human who you view as lesser than yourself um to survive and in well while well, pride's distracted ed attacks him and he does his special trick where he turns it turns himself into a philosopher's stone to get at pride's um core and he like destroys his container and then we see that um all that's left behind is a teeny tiny baby um <laughs> you were and- dying <laughs> <laughs> he's so cute um and ed like puts some sets him gently on the on his coat and he leaves to join the fight that was a cute scene and of course it's ed so he's gonna protect little like he calls him salim when he takes Mm -hmm. the baby out which i thought was an important distinction but at the same time the first time we watched this episode i was like that thing is tiny you can't leave it it's gonna die in the elements it's just in this Mm -hmm. underground cavern it's defenseless (laughs) Hmm, you know what i was thinking about Mm. is i bet a lot of people died when their souls like left their bodies i mean they don't cover that but like if you were driving oh my goodness and like you're it's like like if the rapture happened in like the chaos oh man yeah yeah you're driving or like we saw a scene where like the earth started to shake and they're like, oh, we better turn off the stoves. And it's mm. like, okay, like, what if you didn't do that? And then started a fire. Like, I think the one thing I would say that might have spared people that is that um, when it first started, it's not like people a, just, they yeah, didn't they just had collapse. A few they, yeah, they had a few seconds true. to go, oh, oh, something's wrong. So usually, I think when that happens, people have enough sense to be like, if they're driving, they pull over. Or if they're walking down the stairs, they slowly sit down. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully everybody's okay. Yeah, obviously they're not really going to be some like, some accidents yeah, there might occur. be some accidents, but they're not really going to cover that. No. Um, Let's just anyway. give it the benefit of the doubt and say that people had enough time to just you know calmly take care of what they needed to. <laughs> yes, we'll say that. Yeah, sure. Except for the man that was fighting a bear, he's dead. <laughs> wait wait but the animals in the anime oh right there. <laughs> in the anime <laughs> but in the manga he's a goner 
Okay. Who's just randomly fighting a bear in the middle of a mistress? Um, there's <laughs> in the northern part there's bears and there's huge No one but a zoo is crazy <laughs> enough to do that. <laughs> I'm sorry, not a bear, something else. <laughs> he, they're hunting, okay? I was just I was like imagining a guy hunting mm-hmm. and then or like let's say there's a traveling circus in town. They're doing their feats of fancy and like trapeze artists that there's going to be accidents there if they just keel mid mm-hmm. mid flip. <laughs> True, like they wouldn't that you might not have enough time to <sighs> you're in mid air and that happens. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. That's rough, buddy. But anyway, just let that reference in there. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So, uh, tracking. Uh, tracking whenever Ed destroys his gloves. His gloves are now missing. When did they disappear? We didn't see them get torn, I don't think. I saw them last episode. Mm-hmm. But now they're gone. I don't know. It's okay. It's better that he's fighting without them. Um, And then homunculus deaths, wrath, and pride both bit the dust. That means greed is the last one standing. The best one. Yes! <laughs> um, the only homunculus we want to survive. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, and then as for animation expertise, I really, really like the Ed versus Pride fight, um, in part for the character growth of Ed, but in other parts for the design of it. It is spectacular in the manga, but I really, I also love what they did in the anime there's a stylistic shift the the lines are a little bit thicker there's this rough feel to it and there's kind of like this red color scheme going on yeah awesome (laughs) (laughs) giving you you a thumbs up which nobody can hear (laughs) (laughs) they can sense it (laughs) all right and i think that's kind of all we had yeah Um, fast yeah, I know, it actually did. This is really action packed. So um what was your favorite line of the episode? Mine came from Ed when he was backing up Hohenheim. Can't you even do this, old man? <laughs> <laughs> even in a crisis, still gotta still yep. gotta rip on him. <laughs> yep. What was your favorite line? Mine came from Greed and it was when father was about to have molten lava poured on him. Um, Gary's like, the sweet memories. That's exactly the tub I took a bath in. Now it's your turn, daddy. The way he said daddy, it just killed me. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. In um, manga, he said daddy dearest. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and what did we learn in this episode? We learn to look beyond someone's actions to see who they are, like how Ed saw past Pride's form as a homunculus and saw him as a little boy, a son, a person. Yes, and then who pushed the story forward in the episode? Ed and Scar for defeating the homunculi they respectively fought, and Scar also activated the reverse transmutation circle. Yes, and also shout out to all of um Hohenheim souls who activated the other um <laughs> good job guys <laughs> the other uh <laughs> circle that saved everybody yeah let's not forget that that's like the most important <laughs> one yes and then yeah if i remember to post on instagram um this week we will post a poll about which was a better fight, Ed versus Pride or Scar versus the Fear? Which yeah. we have different opinions. And both are valid. Uh-huh. It's just I like mine for certain reasons and you like yours for certain reasons. Yes. But before we end this episode, I had a kind of random question, but a fun one I just mm-hmm. kind of came up with today. So this is just fan theorizing, but we know that Edward, he's not much of a crier. He doesn't he doesn't show that sort of emotion often. He likes to hold it in. However, when watching movies, what would be the movie he would ball his eyes out uncharacteristically, you know? Okay, this one just came to me. Okay. I was thinking about it. It would be something with siblings and I like Grave of the Fireflies. He'd be Ooh. a goner. 
I think he'd need therapy. Because, like, he would totally, like, he would, like, totally relate to that, like, trying to care for your younger sibling and then failing and, yeah. yeah. I think I might have heard someone say this one before, and this is kind of a generic answer, but, you know, the movie Homeward Bound? Uh, is that an animal movie? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, yeah, I know that (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I think that one would be like everyone would be watching it, and I would expect maybe Al to get a little emotional on that one. But the scene where the dogs and the cat come home, I feel like Ed would just be in a puddle, like, "Don't look at me! I don't know why I'm crying." Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been so long since I've seen that movie. I just have like That's vague memories. Yeah. You want to know the impressive thing? It's It's been ages since I've seen it, but I definitely grew up with it, and my whole family mm-hmm. likes it. So um, my brother and I uh, play this game called the Soundtrack Game. We will pick a song from a random soundtrack from a random movie, and the other one will have to guess it. You just play a little clip of it. So it would be like Prince of Egypt, How to Train Your Dragon, although we both nailed that one on the first couple beats of the song. But I decided to throw my brother a curveball, and I played the theme from Homeward Bound. And he was just, like, so stumped. Like, what? What is that? And we added some rules to the game where you get a couple of guesses or hints or whatever. And I had given him all the hints, and he had gotten to his last guess. And he just sat there for a solid minute. And all of a sudden, he turned and looked at me, and he's like, is this Homeward Bound? It's like, how did you get that? <laughs> Locked deep inside your brain. Yeah, the childhood memory just rose out of him. <laughs> uh-huh. Awesome. Hmm. All right. Well, that's all we've got. Yeah. We are getting so close to the end. There's only, like, really, manga-wise, there's only, like, one volume left. And we've got, what, three more episodes? <laughs> Oh, Ooh, dude, technically only... Oh, because we're going to combine the last two. Oh, my God. But then we'll have our bonus. We'll have our bonus episodes. We have two bonus episodes. Two bonus episodes. But yes. anyway, uh, we will be back next time. And Happy New Year, everyone, because we kind of forgot to say that. Oh, yeah. We're, we're coming. <laughs> Good job. You remembered. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> Well, All right. what, what animal is it? What year, like, year of the... Mm, Google it. Okay. Year. Oh. Is it the dragon? It's the dra- It's our year. It's the dragon. It's Hathori. Hathori. <laughs> All right. Happy year, the dragon, everybody. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.